in this week's Race Pace. I talk to you about what's happened in the last couple weeks of racing and what's coming up in the next few weeks. So strap in. Welcome to the Race Pace. fact i already recorded this all once and my phone's sd card messed up and i'm starting over again so uh two weeks ago mommy had their second event of the year out there and they changed the whole track up it was short course now this time it was a um rally cross style the video made it look much more xc where it's night uh tighter in the woods uh ended up being it wasn't at all so i saw it as that i said in a comment that it looked tight uh after seeing the footage of the other stuff of the actual race it wasn't actually so i'll i'll say that i was wrong on that one but uh it looked like a fun event devin smith ended up winning it again good job devin uh he's just on fire and the stuff he's going to and the stuff the races he's hitting he's doing great um and then last weekend, I went out to MWXC with Barry Miller, and I rode with him. I played the meat sack that rode in the passenger seat. Uh, kind of regret it. <laughs> that was, hands down, the roughest track I have ever been on in my entire life. And I've been in some rough ones. That one just bottom out on rocks. And I mean, hats off to the MWXC crew and the owners. Uh... It's not their fault. I'm not saying, oh, it was them who did it. I'm saying they had, it wasn't the best location due to, A, they only had 150 acres, as I think all that that place is. And I heard that they were using a jackhammer to try and make the track. So if you're having to use a jackhammer to make the track, you got something wrong going on there. Um, but I did get to see a bunch of people that I really don't see too often. Uh, just because they're on the other side of the country, because this one was the first co-sanctioned race, I guess they're calling it, between MWXC, AXC, and AXCC. I know that sounds confusing, but that's what it is. So basically, each series picks in each class a racer to represent them. So if you normally race AXC, uh, and you're a fast guy and they want you to represent them, then... Um, like, they pick you to represent them. Now, the thing I don't get about this is racers are not series loyal specifically. I'll race, I raced one AXC this year. I broke on the parade lap, but, like, I technically raced. So, um, I'll race AXC. I've been in some MWXCs. I don't know if I'll race any of theirs this year, necessarily. And I probably won't race any uh, AXCC, but... You never know. So my thought is, why why are you tying yourself to a series when any given racer could race all three if they really wanted to and probably race more than one in series anyway? So besides that whole point, I did get to see Chad from Dr. Power Sports out there out in, from out in Iowa. Uh, it was nice to see him. He had his Honda Talon there. He had some mechanical troubles. Things happen. I mean, he pulled off before it was a big problem, but... Uh, Things just happened. I got to see Danny Hill out there. He was representing... Was it... I forget which series he was representing. I think it was Andy Kiner. I, it wasn't AXCC, but it was his Iowa series. IATV HS or something like that. Anyway, um, he was representing him. Uh, I think he ended up third. There was some questions about how it was arrowed. Because I guess they arrow different out there than like MWXC arrows. Uh, referring to double arrows and things like that. So um, that just, there was a little bit of questioning about how things were done. Such is life. Anyway, moving on. Uh, who else is up there? Oh, Joe Cook. I got to see him. because nice. Uh, I he, he says he watches every one of these. And thank you, Joe, for watching these. And he wanted a shout out. So this is your shout out, bud. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep watching. We appreciate it. It's really nice. 
it was nice to get to talk to you out there too. Uh, I don't see him too much. Just some of the some of the races we see and kind of holler, hey, you know, as we're going by in different directions is kind of the usual. So uh, that was neat. But Barry Miller and I, we uh, they had enough. I think it was 14, something like that, that they had. Anyway, we started second row. So second row wasn't bad because you get time adjusted anyway. But the track was very rocky. The track was very tight. And the other problem was because it was so rocky and so tight, there was a lot of breakage and a lot of people stuck. And when they were stuck, it caused backups. Well... I think three out of our five or six laps that we turned, whatever it was, uh, we got stuck behind someone who was stuck. So we were in the traffic jam. And it's the luck of racing. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, such as life, right? You go on, and uh, we ended up finishing fifth, and uh, car made it through, no damage other than probably it got beat up on the underside because we bottomed out a whole lot. But... Uh, you know, live and learn, you have fun. It was only a few miles from Barry's house, so he had to, he pretty much had to race it. Um, it was a good time. So before we get to things that are coming up here in the near future, I'll update you on current state. So obviously my X3, and if you guys have been uh, following along for the last few weeks, you'll know that I've been having brake problems. Well, like I have brakes, but it's not good brakes we'll put it that way uh ever since i got them way too hot down in georgia last year um the paddle the pedal travel will go about three quarters or a little more down before it grabs anything and i pretty much have to have my foot all the way to the floor for it to do anything i would think that would be air in the system but i'm gonna bring you guys up to speed on all the stuff i've done I have replaced the rear calipers, both of them, all the brakes, all the way around. I have replaced the master cylinder. Um, I have manually blooded uh, with someone in the car pushing the brakes while I'm releasing the bleeder screws on all four tires. Done that twice and power bled it four times up until today, which I did it again. So technically I've done it five using something like this it's the motion product power bleeder pump it up to about 15 or 20 psi open the bleeder screws it forces all the fluid out i still have no brakes it's extremely frustrating as you can imagine you kind of want brakes when you're racing um so i'm going to try one other thing tomorrow uh it's getting later here in the night and i'm about done for the day i've been up and running around for no, oh, 12 or now about 13 hours now. So I'm kind of getting to the done point and I still have to edit this and get it out for you all. But uh, I'm going to basically try a combination of manual and power bleed where I'm going to put that uh, power bleeder. I have an access that I cut in my dash right there. Right there. There we go. Where I can get to the reservoirs. And I'll put the power bleeder on it, and I will have someone in the car. Um, I will open the bleeder screw, let the fluid come through to make sure that there's no air, and have them then press the brake pedal down. I'll close the bleeder screw, and we'll do that a few times. Because my only thought is, oh, I forgot again. I also, with that master cylinder that I put in there to replace it, I bench bled it, thinking that maybe that was the problem as well. It does not appear to have been the problem. So what I'm going to do is, since that one's been bench bled, I am going to do the combination power and manual bleeding in a hopes that moving the plunger will get enough movement through there that if there is any air bubble in, it will push it through and get it out through the calipers. Uh, that's my last hope on that. If that doesn't work... Let's just say I've got another plan with a nice new Willwood uh, master cylinder, dual reservoirs, and all the stuff is here, and I'm done. If that doesn't work, I am absolutely done. So you may say, well, the master cylinder may not be the problem if you've replaced it. You're right, but it'll be getting new, uh, new front calipers as well. 
right there. Uh, I've got a plan in mind. I'm going to get breaks one way or another. And my, I'm not going to say my fear, but my worry on it is um, if I melted down the factory bricks once, and even if I get them back, I can probably or will probably melt them down again, which will put me right back in the same scenario I'm in now, which doesn't help. So if I'm going to do it and I'm going to upgrade to the Willwood like this, which, yes, it's a little bigger, but I, I got room for it. Um, if I'm going to upgrade to that, I'm going to upgrade my front brakes and the rears are just kind of along for the ride at that point and we'll see what we get. Uh, if I need to upgrade my rear calipers, I can do that. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing with that yet because that'll be a whole nother project that'll be going on. So um, if I go down that road, I'll, I'll video some for you. Now, stuff coming up in the near future. Um, there are a couple races coming up. I really want to try some new tracks. I'm not saying there's nothing good around here, but I want to try some new tracks. I plan to hit the next Maumee event because they're going back to just doing the short course, um, which is really what I want to race more than anything. So uh, I plan to hit the next Maumee one in the X3. Got to have brakes though. Um, I'm also going to try and get some, uh, I want to, there's a racetrack called Joe's Speedway. I'm pointing like you guys know, can see, but that way is Ohio. Um, about five hours or so from me, it's called Joe's Speedway and some guys on YouTube that I saw uh, run over there. It's not a big fancy track, but it looks like a ton of fun. Not big jumps, it's, it's a fast track, so... Um, Take this thing over there, and I think maybe try that one out. Uh, what is it? Muskegon County Raceway, I think is the name of it. Uh, they're also over there. AXCC raced there last year. They have a short course. Um, so I'm going to go over there. I want to hit that. That's about the same distance, about five and a half hours or so. And then Wagglers is just getting ready to put out their uh, short course series. They have actually done a lot of changes. They totally redesigned the track, I guess, from what I'm told. They, instead of just being on the dirt that they had, they brought in all kinds of clay and put clay on the top. I don't know that it'll ever blue groove like some short course tracks will, but we shouldn't dig trenches like we were before. We were digging deep ones. So that's some of the tracks I want to hit this year. I think we're planning on, me and a few guys are planning on going to Texplex for the 12-hour event. I know several guys I've talked to that race. They're planning on going down there, so I'll get to meet up with them. Planning on going to Heartland Challenge yet this year. That's uh, I think it's in August, so it's coming up pretty quick. I am not racing this in that race. It's uh, just not. There's too many things going on with it right now. Um, I might pit for some people, or I might just hang out. We'll just see how that all goes. Um, Texplex, I think... I think we have a plan. I'm not going to reveal that plan yet. I'll probably be doing some driving in that from from what the plan looks like. And uh, let's see, what's the other? Oh, uh, the St. Jude's ride down there with the Southern Mud Riders. Uh, I think we, as Doug and I, are both going to that. So that'll be a good time. That's later on in the year. I think that's October, if I remember right. But they're having that again. So I'm excited. I have not been to that. Doug has been to it. Um, really looking forward to that one. Uh, that's something I want to do. This machine won't even go. It they, <laughs> The chain down there said, don't even load it up because it's not going to do anything down there. I said, if I hit the mud holes fast enough, it'll be fine, right? Uh, no, they got seats for us, so we're going to do it that way. I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors this year, our uh, main and premier sponsor is uh, Country Financial. If you guys need insurance of any kind, life insurance, all that, I mean, I know it sounds super boring So to just say insurance, but I talked about that they also do uh, race, nice hair, Chad. They also do uh, race insurance. So uh, if you want to insure your race machine, a lot of insurance companies won't do that. They have an option for that. Uh, if you are a race series owner, they can provide you with like race series insurance. If you're a off-road park, they can provide you with uh, insurance for that. 
they really they are racers it's the weitzels um and they are racers and they provide specialized racer insurance along with everything else you need so big thanks to them we also have uh, 834 powder coat matt over there in Terre Haute. look him up does great work did the cage on this and the bumper well not the bumpers the rear bumper the door frames all that fun junk he did all that does great work uh and mikey's speed and fab there in Terre Haute also and he knows 834 so uh he does everything uh jeep stuff bumpers uh x3 cages and bumpers and frames and everything uh razor stuff too of course i mean all of it he owns a razor so we won't hold that against him but he does know matt price too so like i've said in the past if you want a cage done he can do the cage for you get it straight over to matt at 834 and they can work together and just have you a finished product then at the end uh, also we want to thank our precision powder coat keith over there in uh, the mooresville area he does powder coating also uh, he does great work he is uh, he, he's out at the races too he goes out to several of them he's a sponsor of several of the series so these are people that are supporting the things that i do and i guess you guys do that we do so support their businesses it's uh it's a good thing to have them on board so uh that's all we got for you guys and uh catch on the next one